Peace, family. So this video is over a very, 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 very important topic. Uh, been doing a lot of research on this heavily, like the past couple weeks, and I've been on it for a couple years. I had took some about a year ago. I was taking some my uh the home girl had some ornaments and she was on like some I forgot which one she had <clears throat> she let me borrow her phase one or whatever like she had wasn't using it for some reason so and yeah the ornaments felt like it was working and stuff so I was seeing stuff out the corner of my eye you know my third eye will pulsate I'll get pineal headaches so I'm like okay yeah this stuff's the real deal it's working and then just recently I started making it so <clears throat> It's crazy, Ormus is just, you know, Ormus is really powerful. So, without further ado, uh, I'm just going to give you all, all the benefits that I know, all the knowledge and facts that I have on Ormus accumulated till now. My condensed version, because I don't want to make this video too long, I already tried it and it was a 30 minute video, so. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I have some Ormus right here with me, I'm going uh, to show y'all tell y'all about it or whatever and I'm gonna make a uh, how-to video soon <clears throat> on how to make it so yeah so okay uh, starting off what is Ormus so I'm gonna go pretty fast here so Ormus is a class of physically distinct atomic mineral substances that appear to be closer to the state of ether slash vacuum slash zero point field than the matter commonly found on the periodic table of elements so they're more closely related to the ether and in space than they are to their metallic state on the periodic table of elements so <clears throat> okay where does ormus come from and i'm gonna go through the names you know ormus mana m state monatomic gold mfkzt from the egyptian ancients and ormi orme or orms uh all this, all ORMS stands for is orbitally rearranged monoatomic elements. And that's ORME. But the man that rediscovered ORMS, <clears throat> David Hudson, he has a patent on the name ORMI. So that's why you see it on the internet and everywhere. People call it ORMUS. It's kind of like a copyright thing. Yeah, so it's just orbitally rearranged monoatomic elements. And I'm seeing a lot of confusion. People think monatomic gold and Ormus isn't the same thing. Monatomic gold is a monatomic element. Ormus contains monatomic gold, but Ormus isn't just solely monatomic gold. So you have Ormus with all these monatomic elements. <clears throat> and I'll give you a list of all the metals that are in there in a second. But Ormus contains all these monatomic elements and one of them happens to be gold and you can take it and uh, burn it and isolate certain metals like gold and get monatomic gold, monatomic silver, or whatever you want. So, uh, <clears throat> Ormus has monatomic gold. Monatomic gold isn't Ormus's. Is. But yeah. So, where does Ormus come from? Uh, it comes from the Dead Sea. They noticed it was forming naturally in the Dead Sea. Uh, and people would travel, go there to take baths in the Dead Sea and have all the healing effects. Because Dead Sea salt is very powerful. And that's the salt you want to use when you're making Ormus. If you can use <clears throat> Dead Sea salt, that'd be the best thing. Dead Sea mixed with Himalayan. People use Celtic and all that. All the salt is good, but to get the best benefits you need the dead sea salt <clears throat> but not knocking any other ways or salts you want to use so okay so the dead sea is 1300 feet below sea level this is the deepest lowest natural place on the earth and the concentration of salts and minerals is 10 times more concentrated in the dead sea than it is in regular oceans so this is why you want to use, you know, Dead Sea salt instead of regular oceanic salt or any other salt. 
it still works, but if you want to be seeing into different dimensions, you get that Dead Sea. <clears throat> it has the 21 minerals, including magnesium, calcium, sulfur, bromide, iodine, sodium, zinc, potassium. Uh, real quick, I meant to introduce all my crystals with me. I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Got the lapis for the throat. Got the wand. Got the quartz, you know, rose quartz, amethyst, shungite in the middle. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. All right, so the Ormus elements come from, <clears throat> it's just like an alchemical change that takes place. The When you make Ormus, you add the sodium hydroxide or the lye or the washing soda just to extract the Ormus out of the dead sea salt or the salts you're using so you're not creating anything you're extracting ormus from the dead sea salt so <clears throat> the ormus elements that come from the dead sea salt the metals include and david hudson has a patent on all of these except mercury it's cobalt nickel ruthenium rhodium palladium silver osmium iridium platinum gold and mercury those are the monatomic metals that are in Ormus <clears throat> so uh, Ormus is abundant in seawater uh, they're stealth atoms which means they don't show up in spectroscopic analysis which requires electro or uh, electron interaction so this means that when they try to measure Ormus and study it and find these elements they disappear because you have electromagnetic <clears throat> or electro, uh, electronic devices around them. And Ormus doesn't like low frequencies, low EMFs, as we know. So that's why you have to keep it in tin foil, aluminum foil. Uh, if you, you can put it in stainless steel pots and cover them. Uh, if you're using the metal, it's best to use stainless steel. But yeah, that's why you have to keep it away from uh, EMFs because they're really reactive to it. <clears throat> and on the other side of the spectrum, they're really positively reactive to high frequencies. So if you're making Ormus on a grid point or a ley line, you'll get a high yield most likely, especially if you make it on a full moon. Like, this should be straight spiritual, you know, an alchemist, an alchemical process that's taking place and this shit is is literally otherworldly ormus goes in and out of dimensions it's, it's this is like universal spiritual medicine but uh yeah so ormus if you're on a ley line you'll have a high ormus yield because that's where the energetic points of the earth is so it's a high amount of electromagnetic energy a high frequency and the ormus likes that you know and it, it doesn't like the low frequencies it'll literally disappear when they try to measure it with their little uh electron microscopes and stuff like that or whatever <clears throat> because of the the frequency so anyway moving on so uh david hudson he's the one that uh rediscovered this and uh in his basalt rock and him and other researchers uh they found out that ormus forms the elements form cooper pairs and this means that the electrons around the atoms are all paired up. <clears throat> and since they're no longer available for electron bonding, they will not react the same way as in the metallic form of the elements. So basically, they, they don't form compounds and they, <clears throat> they don't do that anymore. And they found out that physicists have been performing experiments that mimic this behavior, right? So their version is that they have to bring a bunch of atoms to a temperature near absolute zero and this uh, is a temperature where all movement ceases to exist in an atom and then they get these atoms to condense into a single atomic state so that they're pretty much behaving like all one atom like all the monatomic metals in there gold iridium rhodium silver mercury are all like are right, one atom now because you know what i'm saying so they call this mat state of matter bose einstein condensator condense it Yes, BECs, Bose-Einstein conditions, because they figured it out or whatever. So, 
This is literally a whole other state of matter. So this is why orange.